So we're going to talk about uh, TB apps in React Native and do a very, very basic crash course. Um, it's going to be very surface level, so hopefully it's kind of accessible to everyone. So we are going to be uh, covering a few things today. So firstly, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what? You can actually build TB apps with React Native? Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about where this whole idea of building TB apps came from. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of the components that go into building TV applications and how they differ from mobile apps. Uh, and then we're going to show a demo of a React Native-based TV app. And finally, we're going to talk about some of the challenges with TV. Hi, everybody. I'm Joanny Lapidano. I'm developer advocate on Amazon. That means that I'm helping developers with creating their apps for the Amazon App Store. I'm wearing the Amazon App Store today. That is like the App Store that is running on Fire TV and Fire Tablets, even on Android phone. You can download it. So essentially, like my past was, before I was a software engineer in C++ and native under development. So I mean, Java and Kotlin. So like, I'm really starting now to approach React Native for mobile. My Actually, my first experience with React Native was developing a VR application. I don't know if anybody of you knows React 360. It was a SDK from Meta that is now deprecated. It was allowing developers to create VR application with React. So this was one of my first experience, like four years ago, something like that. Now I'm more dealing with React Native and TV apps and mobile apps. Cool. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mo. Uh, I head the mobile team at Theodo uh, here in the UK. Uh, we, You may know us by BAM as well. So our mobile team, our specialized mobile team is called BAM, and we have a presence in France and also in the UK. Uh, I've been doing mobile development for a while, so I built my first Objective-C app when I was 13. Uh, it was this app that would prompt you to do something nice for the day. So like take some flowers to a care home or something like that. Uh, it was an awful app in terms of how buggy it was. Like, honestly, it was the worst app that you could ever write. Um, but it somehow passed the Apple App Store um, restrictions. So pretty happy about that as a 13-year-old. Uh, and these days I'm, I'm focused on cross-platform app development, mobile DevOps, and pushing the boundaries of how much you can share between web and mobile. Cool. So React Native for TV. Uh, it's actually been a long, around for quite a while. Uh, so uh, the first mentions that I was able to find, um, and this is a bit difficult because the archive.reactnative.dev site, uh, it's, uh, the security uh, certificates are broken, so you can't actually access that anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but uh, the, the earliest reference I could find is in version 0 0.49, where it talks about tvOS uh, and some of the improvements that they've done to like the tvOS build. Um, Android TV was added uh, in 0 0.55, and um, more recently there's been this effort, and I say recently, it's after 0 0.62, uh, there's been an effort to take uh, the uh, TV-related logic within React Native and move it into React Native tvOS, a dedicated repository, to kind of make the core internals of uh, React Native as lean as possible. Now, um, we've actually had TV talks uh, for a long time. You can see uh, Valentin there. So he did a talk two years ago, three years ago. Do you remember how long ago it was? That? Yeah, so four years ago. There we go. So uh, thank you. Yeah, did a very good introductory talk as well in uh, in terms of TV in the space in Android TV. So if you're interested in that, scan that QR code. Uh, it's it's a very good talk. So yeah, actually. Uh, I did my first experience as an under developer was a similar app, like like the app that you already developed, like uh, in React Native, or one of the first. So similar topic, like mm. it was amazing. Yeah. It was, I just discovered this. <laughs> so like I did a similar presentation, like the one that I am having today with Mo uh, for Android developers, and I have always the question, like why the hell should I develop for a TB? Why them? But why should I ever? Like what is what about the market and? Um, I have some numbers here, like the source is like at the bottom of the slide, but like we are, I mean, in 2022, the market sales revenue was about 18 billion, a little bit more than 18 million, 18 million and a half. And this like um, calculated that the growth should be for 2030, about 85%. So like it's a market that is still growing. A lot of people have like smart TVs. We are talking about smart TVs, okay? So like, Every one of you probably has a smart TV at home. It's a market growing. And there are quite a few apps, not like, uh, there should be like, comp like I didn't put in the slide, but 10,000 smart TV apps in the market. So like there is a lot of possibility to grow. Of course, many developers ask me, okay, but it's more about streaming 
content or maybe little games. Yes, these kind of apps are have the majority of the pie of the earnings, but you can look and you can develop different kind of apps even for TV that are not only about streaming content. Like think about the education of health and fitness as well. There is a really good place to uh, and a reason to develop for that. So I asked Dali about what is a TV operating systems and like he display he showed me he drew me that uh, complex image about like TV where something is like messy so the UI is not really like clean. I'm not I don't want to advertise okay but I think it's like the Fire OS Fire TV the Fire OS operating system running on a Fire TV. So this is like more or less what I consider a clean user interface for a system, for a TV operating system, okay? There are some common points with all the TV operating systems. Like the first of all, the content is the king. So like I said before, yes, of course, a big chunk of apps are presenting content. So like many developers, if they don't have like videos or like audios or photos to display in an app, sometimes like they can be a little bit of an issue. You need to find a really good use case and you need to use content to present. Of course, you need to run, you need to run the apps the most, like the most quickest as possible. So even like considering the limited hardware that is like on the DB, not only like, it's not, it's very different for your t for your smartphone or tablet. And usually, the, TV, the, the TV operating systems are not allowing background process or like if they are allowing, there is just, there are very, really, really strict limitation or sometimes enable only for audio playback in the background. But because essentially it's something that you don't need if you are using a TV. We are talking, when we are talking about TV, we are talking about, uh, there is a word called, this system is like, especially the experience is like the 10th foot, UI, 10, 10 feet user experience. What does it mean? 10 foot is like, I'm Italian, so like I'm calculating by using meters, is around three meters. That is like the distance that a user have with your app. So like a user interacting with the app on the TV is like laying on the sofa, maybe after a long time after the, the work, not attending meet up, but you know, like at home, like, okay, I wanna watch something or I want to play something. So like it's about three, uh, three meters on the sofa and phone, you're up. And of course you want to have the best experience as possible, like with a clean UI and sometimes even an easy and clean to use app store to select and install the UI. And, these are, and there is another important thing that I didn't put on the slide that I put in my pocket, that is this. Usually the user is interacting with your app, not with a touch because it's like, or he has a long arm, like about 10 foot <laughs> arm. So yeah, to use this. And this is essentially driving the user experience with the app. So we're going to see about the most useful guidelines if you want to develop a TV app, a TV app with React Native. What about the fragmentation? As a developer in React Native, you know the problem of the fragmentation. You actually have a solution. Okay, you can use a framework to develop for iOS and Android, but in the TV world, the things are more messy. So like we have Smart TV OS, that is like Tizen, Tizen OS from Samsung. We have Fire TV, the operative system of Fire OS. We have Android TV. We have WebOS TV that is from LG. And then we have Apple TV. And this is only, a, this is only the majority of the operating system, like the, probably the most famous, but there are, are, are chunks of other operating system that runs on the TV. So the fragmentation is enormous. And I started a little bit of solution, like even using, can I say Flutter here? Oh, no. Okay. Raise, raise your hand if you get offended if somebody said Flutter here. So That's essentially good. like, yeah, I use it Android, I use it like Android cause native like to develop, but of course you can cover only Android TV and Fire TV because Fire OS is like a, version is using a version the open source version of android i try to use flutter but it's not compatible with many operative systems like apple with if you want to develop an app with flutter and apple tv and tv os good luck like it's it's it's, it's not officially flutter also is not officially supporting the tv platform 
you can do something with 130B, okay? For Smart TV by Tizen, there is like a version of Flutter to use for that platform. So it's a little bit messy. So in this case, I choose because it was the best solution, React Native. So like with React Native, you can develop for these platforms and even other, and you can develop an app for, for TVs, essentially, yeah. Cool. So what are the core components to a TV app? Uh, raise your hands, how many of you actually have a smart TV or a TV that has these sort of like functionalities with apps? Raise your hands. Well, that's over 50%, right? So I want you to take a moment and just imagine the different elements and components that you interact with on your TV, right? And we're going to slowly start building an app together by combining a bunch of these different elements and looking at how you should approach them. So we'll start with a blank TV first. The first point of entry that you go into a TV app with is usually the left-hand menu, which is called a drawer navigation menu. Some people have different names for it, but that's kind of the entry point that you have, and it's your main point of navigation. So Giovanni's going to talk us through the guidelines for how you build a drawer navigation inside your TV apps. Yeah, essentially, I started a little bit the guidelines coming from Google, from Tizen, from Fire OS about how to create the perfect UI for the TV. And the drawer is one of the most used components. It's driving your user navigation to your app. And it has to be clean because like I said, the user is probably tired, they don't want any problem, they want any issue, or they want to control the app by using the controller. So the drawer is with the one that is driving toward the most used direct destina destination, is the term, destination in your app. The guidelines sometimes say that you, have, you need to have, like, you cannot have, of course, 100 destinations, you know, because otherwise you, the user will just spend the most of his time, like, going up and down toward the, the option in the left menu. So you have to have between three and seven destinations. This is, like, the golden number for the drawer options. And usually the topest one, the top option, like, on the top left, is used for the user uh, to log in or to change user. So it's data dedicated to the user information and the top left one the bottom left one is the user that like the less used one is the area dedicated to the area dedicated to the options and where you can set up all the things about your apps sometimes the of course the drawers need to have an animation it can be like collapsed and uh, contracting like on the left side you can use icon and text so the drawer can be simply uh, being recognized. So the action can be simply recognized by the user. Remember, your user is on the sofa far away. And then well, another thing, like can have badges. So like if there is some, I will not say notification because notification is a little bit different in the TV, but if you have like new content to present or new some new information to present at that destination, you can add like a small badge on the option in the drawer. Uh, ah, yeah, the top part is also good for uh, logos if your app has logos. So, or sometimes you can put like in the top center the logo. And sometimes you can also have a screen overlay on top on the right part. That is the area dedicated to your content. That's like you can have the screen like to actually focus the attention on the option menu. So that's the thing. The other can really blank it out by, blank it out by a screen. Yeah. How to do this in React Native? Cool. So, uh, previously, uh, there used to be a tab bar iOS component in React Native. So when you wanted to actually build for TV OS specifically, you could go ahead and use the tab bar iOS component, and that would actually uh, give you the native level uh, tab menus that go at the very top of the TV apps if anybody has Apple TV. Uh, now, this has been depre deprecated since because nobody really uses that in regular React Native anyway. Uh, and so uh, it's recommended that you use React Navigation's tab bars. The challenge with this is that uh, it's not actually very optimized for TV. So there's quite a few reports of bugs when you're using tab uh, bars with uh, TV applications. And these bugs are typically around the focus management side. So it doesn't handle focus management and TV uh, tabs very well. So you're left in a bit of a weird place. Uh, and you have two options to deal with this. So one option is that you can write custom native components for each of these TV platforms and handle the navigation there on the native layer. Um, but then that has its own set of challenges again with focus management and the likes. Uh, but you have a second option, which is to actually handle this on the JavaScript layer. 
and then you can have maximum code reshare. There is a concern around performance, but there's actually good ways to counter that as well. So let's go for this option. Let's let's see how we would create a JS implementation for the tab views. And you'll actually see that the, the purpose of this is to show you that it's actually not too far away from the React Native code you're writing on a day-to-day -day for mobile applications. Uh, so if we look here, we're going to start building from small to big. So we'll start with the menu items on the left-hand side. Uh, it takes a few props in, like a short label that you would display when the menu is collapsed, the label itself, and a, a prop to say, is the menu open so that it can conditionally show what the full label text is. And we've got a box in there. That box is just really a view. Uh, and then a button as well within it that either shows the short label or if the menu is open, will actually show the full scale uh, text for that specific menu item. So we've got an individual menu item now. We have a few sort of uh, secondary components that we use or components that are helper components. So these are just styled views effectively. One is the menu overlay and the menu container. So the menu overlay is an animated view that opens and closes on the left-hand side, depending on uh, the state that uh, the, the menu is in. And it will animate the, the width uh, accordingly based off of that. And so when you take all of these components and put them together inside of your menu, you can keep a track of the state. Uh, you can use any themes that you have. And then uh, based off of that, keep a track of the animated value for the width. And then uh, based off of that, uh, expand or close your menu items and sort of declaratively define what items go into your menu. <coughs> so that's the drawer. The next big part of any TV application that you'll see is a grid of items. So we'll go through how we construct the grid of items and the guidelines for it. This is essentially the right part of the app. You know, the left part was like the drawer, but what can I show like on the right part? So this is the area to dedicate to the actual content of your app. And it has to be organized, like following the guidelines. The best option is the grid. Why the grid? Remember about the controller, the way that the user is interacting with your app. And the user is usually using the directional path. So like pressing up, top, bottom, top, up, down, left, and right. So because the user cannot really touch the screen, the best way to present the content related to the way he navigates toward your app is actually presenting a grid. So he can easily identify after is he can see which area of the screen, which co which content is selected. He can easily identify like where the focus should go, like moving the controller. So the grid is the best option to present the content. It's optimized for, like I said, for access navigation. And the selected part that is like the part on, considered on focus should be not overlapping with the other content. So you should not create a, like to create a clean UI is better that if you want like, for instance, scale the content to make it focusable, it's better not to cover the other content, like the other cards. The content can be organized in cards or tiles, whatever you want to call it. It can be arranged with titles, like representing the categories. It can be, sometimes it can be good to have a tab navigation. And the tab navigation is like on the top, and it's usually dedicated to navigating, selecting the categories of the content. Like, so the, the way of navigating to the main navigation of your app will be the left side menu, the drawer, and then the tab can, the tab can be dedicated to the nested navigation of the app. And yeah, another, another things like about the animation, like the, sometimes you can, of course, you would like to anim you want to animate the list, and you need to think that navigating is the time in displaying the navigation, the displaying the animation of the scrolled list can be different between tablet and TB. In this case, on TB is good. It's a good things to move, like to draw the animation that is actually moving the list toward the focus element. So we'll see in a bit the demo. So the, the, the animation is coming from the right side to the left side if I go forward with the, if I go right with the controller. Let's see how to do this in React Native. Cool. So there's a few options. Uh, the, the basic naive approach that you can take is to use a flat list um, for the grids. I will just take a look at that in a second. Uh, longer term, though, uh, you might have experienced flat list can generally not scale very well, especially when you have a lot of different items. We talked about how performance is actually a much bigger problem on TV because the hardware that you're dealing with doesn't have gigabytes of RAM or several, you know, uh, uh, eight plus gigabytes of RAM on it. It has 
maybe one or two gigabytes of RAM, depending on what manufacturer it is. And the CPUs are even worse. You're, you're sometimes dealing with single core CPUs. So you really need to harness in on the performance side. Use legend state. Um, but uh, the, the idea is at some point you may find that you have bottlenecks. This is something that our team has seen before. So you can go in and implement a virtualized list yourself that handles the virtualization and you can tailor that specifically to the way that you design your app. So eventually you might need to go down that route. Now, if we just go through the flat list route, I kind of want to just show this again. It's nothing um, too complicated or different from what you're used to. And I want to kind of just leave that up to say, again, this whole TV with React Native is actually quite similar. You'll be quite familiar with it as a mobile developer. Um, so what we've done here with the spot list is we've just set the number of columns to be four to kind of give a grid. You can customize this as you'd prefer. Um, you can even make it a bit dynamic to calculate it based off of the width of the TV. And then you pass in the data and the render item just as you would with any flat list that you have. Uh, so yeah. Now we've got the grid itself. Let's look at the cards uh, quickly and see yes. what are the different sort of uh, guidelines with the cards. Yeah, exactly. So we were in the grid, now we need to go inside to the card or tiles. This is the last leaf, like I said, last point of navigation inside your app. Is the navigation actually entry point to your content? So inside the, inside the grid, you will have a set of cards and this card will be, can be considered as a, as a button, but it's not really a button because it's not like an action on it, but it's more like the action is the action navigation. It's a range of like uh, many times, like you know, the, the majority of the time I, only, I never saw like circle, like cards, of course it's a rectangle. And then you can have different ratio, like I like to use the 60 or nine because it's resembling and it's really like designed to be perfectly on in sync with the TV ratio, no? you have the same ratio, but you can use like one, one or two third. You have to consider that you can use a mix of text and I am just a background. Don't pollute the card with other things. Like you can have like a, a, a hierarchical level of text, like title or description, and then like a background, you can use a photo. You can use icon as well. Avoid long text because the user doesn't want to, the user want to actually consume your content, doesn't want to read. And then consider, because it's a button, the three possible state of a card. Press it, like when the user interact with the card. Focus, when the card is selected, and no focus is in the normal, uh, the normal um, behavior of the card. But in React Native, what is it? So we, we've got a basic card here. Um, we keep a track of the focus state, uh, and we can set that depending on whether or not the actual elements come into focus. The thing that I, I kind of think is important to look at here is uh, the styles that are conditionally set depending on uh, if the focus is selected. So what we do is we increase the opacity uh, if an element comes into focus, and we also scale it a bit up to make it larger. There's different ways that you can look at this, and we're going to quickly uh, go over those in a second. But again, very simple. If you look at the hierarchy, there's an image as the background with some text and potentially a caption underneath it. So that leads us to the sort of smallest element that you interact with, which is the button. You're quite familiar with this, so we're not going to go too deeply into it, but... Yeah, so we saw the card. It is considered like a button, but for navigation, to assess your content. And then what is a button? The button is super easy. It's like the, the smallest element possible that will can have actually an action. So let's imagine like, okay, I want to play the video. I want to pause the video. I want to start the game. So for each button, correspond an uh, action. Here you can use picture, okay, like photo as a as a background of the uh, buttons, but it's better to have like usually a clean uh, user interface using one icon and then less title than the card. So like the action need to be clear with the icon on the photo the, and the title, and then like it's a button. Like like you are really it, in this case is really similar to the one that you are already using to with web, tablet, or phone. Uh, another important thing is try, but this is like quite common. Try to not have variant of style in the button. So let's try, try to be, to have a homogeneous like style for the button. And considering buttons, card, all these elements, these are one thing, I have one thing in common. It is like the focus, even the focus. So like the way as an element is selected is perceived as select, selected by the user as a guidelines. And because the user is always on the sofa and like about three meters, okay? Don't 
highlight the element chart with just like, I don't know, one more, like a, a little bit lighter color around the background, something like that, because probably it's not perceivable at a long distance. So try to, I mean, all the guidelines are agreeing in this part. Try to use an outline color, and but even scale the element. That can be a color, a bottom, a, a button, a card. So that has to be highlighted that that element is false. And that is pretty much about the UI part of the focus management. So focus management is actually one of the toughest parts of building a TV app. And it's paired with performance that actually presents its unique set of challenges that you don't really deal with on the mobile side. Um, now, when you're looking at focus, it's actually a non-trivial problem. So how do you element when, if you've got the remote, I've got a remote here, so the only way that I can interact with my TV is via this remote. I'm selecting this element right here, right? Now, the naive approach that you might take is to do pixel-based focus management. What that means is you look when you click right and you find the closest element to you that from a pixel perspective has the, the shortest length away from your currently focused element. But you can end up in situations like this where if your layout is a bit unconventional, you might have three elements that are equal distance from your current element. So where would you focus if the user clicks right on this situation? It's not very well defined. So this whole approach of pixel-based navigation can sometimes create these edge cases and can sometimes result in behavior that is unpredictable or unrealistic. You may also end up in a position where if you're just doing things based off of the pixel definitions, let's say if you have a row list that you're going through, you reach the end of the row, some users might expect if you click right for it to either redo the, the, the row or maybe go into the next row. And something like pixel-based uh, focus management just would not support that because you're you're not giving it the flexibility to. And that's where um, our team's been working on a different approach to spatial navigation and to focus management called React TV Space Navigation. So this is done by our team in France, BAM. I actually want to give a big shout out to uh, two of the engineers who've worked very hard on this and did a talk at React, Connection, React Native Connection this year. So uh, their names are Pierre Poupin and Matteo Federigo. They've done a phenomenal job on this. This has come from sort of their experience in the last two, three years working on TV apps, and they've kind of tried to find a good solution that's elegant. And the idea with uh, React TV space navigation is that React is declarative. The way that you define elements is actually very natural, and it has a hierarchy to it, and it has a structure to it. So why not use the same declarative approach to navigation and bring it into the way that your users interact and navigate on the TV? So we'll take a look at the, an example of this, and then we'll show you a demo app of it very quickly, and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up from there. So the first step that you have is you uh, use the space navigation library and you define your remote control. So every single TV OS might have different mappings of what a button will do in terms of the action that it triggers. So this is for web right now. So you can define the mappings for like arrow at right, arrow left, up, down, and enter on the web, and you can map that to the specific directions that the spatial navigation library supports. It's going to be slightly different for Android TV and slightly different for tvOS, but you would configure that based off of the specific platform. And that's just the only bit that you would kind of have different across the different platforms. After you do that, you wrap your pages with a spatial navigation route. Uh, so this is straight from the docs, and you can see that there, and there's a lot more detail there. Um, so we've got a page here with two elements, and we wrapped it in a spatial navigation route. After doing that, every single element that you want to be recognized by the spatial navigator, you would wrap that in a node. So you say, this is an element that uh, we want to incorporate into our focus management. And if you want an element to become focusable, well, you just pass it a single prop then that says, is focusable. And then based off of that, you get a prop for the state whenever it is focused, and you can style it conditionally depending on that. So that's adding the borders with the onsets or maybe adding a scale up. And uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. There's a bunch of different options as well here. You can um, auto-focus elements on a single page if you want. So maybe you want to pre-select an element on a page. You can kind of do that out of the box. Um, you also have the option to add callbacks when an element is pressed, uh, so on and so forth. And it also uh, has a very sort of logical approach to how you deal with the drawers as well with the JS space implementation. So I'd highly recommend looking at the library if you just want a simple way to do it. But let's actually just go through a quick demo. We've kept you long enough. So let's take a look at this very quickly. So this is a Android TV emulator. Uh, we've got a basic demo app that the guys have built. Uh, so if you look here, I'm going to be using my left, right, up, down, and I'll try to say what I've pressed. But I can just go left and the menu opens up. If I go right again, it knows to uh, select back the grid. I can start going down and then I can click 
left, right to select the different items here. Once I finish with this row, I will go back to this menu. But when I click right, it knows that I need to go back to the previous row that was selected. So all of that is logically done by the declarative nature that it's defined in the component tree in React. You don't need to create any extra functionality for this. Um, the other thing that's cool here is a lot of the stuff that Giovanni was talking about in terms of focus management, how you actually do the guidelines for the design, uh, this demo has it kind of pre-built. So I'd highly recommend just looking through that example. Uh, I think Giovanni built his own stream streaming platform that's dedicated to him. Um, so you can, like it's very easy to just take it, customize it for yourself and, and, and go from there. Um, now, all of this spatial navigation is actually hooked up to a native stack navigator from React Navigation. So it hooks under the, under the hood to Android stack navigation or the iOS stack navigation. So when I click something, it can render a page on top of the stack and it's got all the functionalities to go back to the previous page. So if I click backspace here, the emulator will register that as a back action on the remote control and will take me back to the main page, all sort of out of the box because it, it plays well with that native layer, uh, native layer uh, navigation. And so you can kind of see all of this behaves and acts as if you had a smart TV app. Cool. Quickly, some of the challenges, we've talked about this. Uh, performance is the big challenge. Um, but you also have, in certain cases, platform-specific differences that you need to handle. So we talked about the different tabs. If you want to use like native layer tab bars or native, native layer drawers to get that native feel for your, for your TV applications, you may need to start writing native components and hook into them for the specific platforms. But on the whole, there is a lot that you can reshare. And with a fragmentation like the TV market, where you've got 20% on one TV manufacturer, 10% on another, and it's just the top five are constantly competing with each other, you are in a very favorable position with React Native because you can share so many components together. You can share so many, so much of the logic together. It saves you the hassle of needing to recreate it for every single platform or manage it. Well, let's wrap up. Yeah, like like you said, I. I... I mean, I'm, a, I'm an Android developer, so I should say that React Native is a solution to develop like TV apps that are running across all the, all, at least the majority of operating systems on TTP. It's like solving the fragmentation issue in this case, yes, of course. And for the declarative nature, like you can solve even like the focus management, even like thank you to your library, like the one that you develop because it's really cool way, it's a really good way to handle the navigation. So like, yeah, I suggest you to check the demo app because it's like even like, respecting a lot of good UI guidelines for TV apps. Uh, and then, yes, now we saw like that performance is important for TDB. Probably we're going to dedicate another pr presentation on performance because like it's another big set of uh, problem and solution to, to solve, like to be solved. All right. Well, thank you all for sticking around. Uh, and uh, we hope that you give uh, TV apps a shot. Try it around and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah.